What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to give you guys my impressions of Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. After 10 hours of playing it, I do want to do a full-on review, but this game is obviously massive, and it's something we're going to talk about in this video. You know, I got to put in the hours, and once I beat it, once I, you know, have experienced a good amount of the game, I want to do, you know, another video where I do a review, and that's probably going to come 50, 60, 70 hours into this game. And so let's start right there. This game is gigantic. I've spent, like I said, a little over 10 hours when I'm recording this. I'm actually going to put a lot of time into this game on Sunday, which is also when you'll see this. I am loving the heck out of this thing, but the game is so big. There is so much to do, and... You know, every chapter, they add a little bit more. They'll add a mini game like that crazy taxi, you know, mini game. And you can sink hours into that. I haven't even gotten to the island, which the island can take hundreds of hours just on its own. The side missions alone are long. There's so many side missions. Like I said, all the mini games can take up a lot of time. Grinding, you know, this game, it is actually, I don't know where the reviewers were coming from. I find it necessary to grind. I find it necessary to try to save up some money to get some of the higher weapons early on in the game. The game can get kind of difficult, and this is someone who just played, you know, the seventh game, but I, I find myself, you know, doing kind of those side things more than even the main story. I'm in chapter four right now, and, you know, like I said already, I love this game. This game is so freaking good. Now, there are, you know, I do have a couple problems with it, and maybe we'll just start with that first. The first thing is the enemies. Um, so one thing they changed in this game that they were very proud of, and I, I'm proud of them, but I'm not proud all the way. The enemies are less sensitive, right? So you can be walking down the street and enemies won't, you know, engage you as often as they did in the last game. That's great. And I have noticed that. That is a noticeable change. The issue that I find is they still put dozens of enemy groups everywhere. You can't go down a street without finding like five different groups. And there's some areas where it's a, a lot bigger of a problem. There's some times where it's a very thin street. Or if you go into kind of a new, you know, area of the map and maybe you want to kind of sneak around, yeah, the enemies won't notice you as much. But if there's seven different groups of enemies and they're the purple ones, they're the ones that are just going to destroy you, there could be like seven groups of them in like a 50-foot radius. And so you can try to go around them. And yeah, they're less sensitive in seeing you, but there's too many of them. Um, and that that's it. For me, it's standing out. I wouldn't honestly say it because you could say it's a nitpick. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm nitpicking, but because I'm spending so much time going from point A to point B in this game, I see a lot of enemies. And so it's something that's always there in front of you. Now, the fights are awesome. I actually love getting into fights. And in a lot of ways, this is way more strategic than the last game. You can still, and I do often, you can like rush the fights. You know, if, if you are fighting a couple smaller grunts, right? You can be done in that thing with like, you know, 20, 30 seconds, be done. I don't even check my stats. I don't know how much I make from those little fights right you can kind of get in and out and the fighting is still fun but you can do it really really quickly but if it's a bigger fight there is a lot of strategy there and that's a huge positive this game makes you focus and you know you got to have that positioning right and you can use you know items now or, you know different weapons on the on the streets uh your characters you, you know you got to use them a little bit different kiryu himself is a very interesting character to use in fighting because of his three different stances that you use very differently so i think the fighting is absolutely excellent and better than the last game and i'm not even close to i don't have all the characters i don't have all the weaponry you know there's so much more that the fighting is going to give you in this game past the 10 hour mark but even where i'm at it's so good but i don't i still don't want to fight you know every 10 seconds and that was a problem with the last game it's still a problem with this game Honestly, the only other issue, and then we'll just talk about, you know, the other positives, the visuals, the, the game looks really good, okay? Hawaii, being in Hawaii is awesome, and it's a change of pace, and it's a change of scenery, and I mean, I love the beach and going in the water, and just, again, like, literally having a different area than, like, a Camarocho or, you know, things like that, it's so freaking good. However, I guess what I'm talking about with visuals is... I'm, I'm genuinely serious. I just played seven, no joke, maybe two weeks ago. Okay. So I, I have very, like the memory is still there. The improvements visually are not really there. The cutscenes where it looks at its best are pretty close to the last game. The minute to minute visuals are extremely close. There, there, there's just some like close ups of characters where the visuals don't look all that good and they don't look improved at all from the last game. And, and that's just something I've personally noticed. It doesn't matter all that much. And I also have thought, well, this game is enormous, right? There's so many different character models. There's so many 
just assets and things, you know, compressed inside it, that is everything going to look amazing? No. And it does still look really good. I'm not saying this is a bad looking game. It absolutely isn't. But is it an improvement over the last game? I'm sure it does literally look better, but not by much. You know, the last game was many, it was like, what, four years ago, I believe. So does it look like this game came out four years after the last one? No, no, it does not. That's it. That's all I got really for negatives because the positives, the story, well, okay, maybe one more half negative. Story is really good at points, but it is slow. And I did see this in reviews. I saw that the story picks up as it goes. You know, it kind of depends on the game because actually several of these Yakuza games have done that. I, I think personally three didn't get good until the last like 20 25 percent of the game and that's a controversial you know opinion I have but that has happened I, I think only actually a handful of them zero starts good like right away right I think some of the Kwame games do too um, but some of them do actually take a while to get going and it's only when like the twists start coming you know what I mean that's when the games get like really really good um, this one has its moments like it does start slow and it is a little bit slower than other games I think it's kind of in line with seven to be honest because I think seven kind of started slow as well but the highlight moments because I've already gotten to some pretty good story beats that I won't spoil but they are extremely good they definitely stand out so you know I, I don't have too much to complain on that and I think the quality is definitely there it's just not there maybe all the time like I said the combat excellent 10 out of 10 the side stuff um, that was another thing I saw in reviews you know leading up to the game I saw that the side stuff is better than the main story which you know what at this point I might believe it because there are some incredible side missions honestly the variety of side missions is some of the best in the entire franchise it, it really is now I haven't done all of them I've probably done though like 20 or so maybe 20 plus side missions in this game completed them and they give great rewards they're all very different from each other and they're just a blast they're fun to play they're different in the gameplay you know oftentimes and maybe this will happen in this game but I just don't know for sure you know sometimes it'll be go talk to this character then go talk to that character fight a group of guys and, and you're done right and that does happen you know from time to time but there's things like waiting on people like you're literally a waiter at a restaurant uh there's one with a uh, a man about his older wife who's actually like ready to pass on and i won't spoil you know what happens but you know the side mission in spider-man 2 that people were praising for how like really great it was as a side mission this i think is very close to that honestly i think the impact is almost equal so there's a lot of amazing amazing content in the side stuff Stuff for this game and, and I'm honestly really really impressed because right now yeah it actually is better than the main one and you know I mentioned some of the the mini games I'm having fun just doing everything that, that's something you know fun has definitely been like an argument in the gaming uh, sphere for a little while what about games that just you know you have fun playing this honestly is one of them like the map is so big and I just enjoy going around and there's just there's things to pick up there's things to trade you know you can go on the beach and pick up trash and you know exchange it for different valuables right again earning money there's like 50 ways of earning money there's characters to talk to there's him walking down the street Ichiban saying aloha to everybody and you make friends you know on the fly you raise your kindness and your passion and there's just so much to do I I'm serious there's so much and it actually Sometimes it can get a little overwhelming. Um, there's some of these things. Like, I just got to the uh, Sujimon battles. And, like, there's a lot of mechanics. And there's a lot of reading you have to do where it's like, man, this is just a game inside a game. The uh, matchmaking app where you literally go on freaking dates. And you have to... I actually love it. I think it's really clever. I think it's really fun. Um, there's just a lot packed into it beyond... And, and it, you know, that is something that these games... They have always done it. But I do think it's become more extreme, maybe in a good way, in recent years where it still does have an overall pretty good story. I don't think they've reached the, the, the heights of the, the better stories. I think the better stories were earlier on. Honestly, six, I really liked. I, but I'm kind of, I feel I'm in the minority there. Seven, I did think it was good, but I don't think it was like the, the best story they've ever told. And then eight, you know, so far it's pretty good, but it's not, you know, amazing or anything, right? So I feel like they've supplemented it, right, with just everything else. There is more to do now than ever before. You can do the the taxi mini game 500 times if you want to. You can max out the the dating mini game, which I, I've done it a few times. You can do it as many times as you want, right? There, there's a microtransactions in the mini game, and they make fun of that in the game. So there's just so many side things that you can really lose yourself and. 
you know, we'll see if it's at a cost of the the main story. You know, so far, I don't really think it's it's that much lower than any previous games. It's great to see Kiryu back. I mean, we did just play, you know, the man who erased his name, so we got him. But he's great in this. Ichiban and Kiryu's, you know, back and forth with each other are really good. I've only seen a few new characters um, at this point, and so far, I really like them too. These games, I've said this before, actually, on my retrospective channel, Podcast Now Back to the Past, they do a really good job of just bringing in new characters. I was afraid with Ichiban because it's like, you know, Kiryu, you've been with him so long. But if you play through, you know, zero all the way up to six, you realize, oh, my God, they, you know, Akiyama, characters like that, right? Obviously, Majima have been there for a long time, but there's so many characters they introduce pretty much in every game. There's some carryovers, but there's also a lot of new characters each time. They're always good. <laughs> like there, There's a couple that don't stand out. The baseball player that I can never remember his name, there's a reason reasoning there because I just didn't like him. There's a few. There's a few characters that don't stand out, but I would honestly say 90% of the time they introduce great like side characters and they they inject them seamlessly. Like they immediately make you like them where they're just part of the 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 general cast. So that's always been a strength of the of the franchise and it's still there now. So overall, do I like it? Of course I like it. I thought I was going to like it. Here's the thing. It's more of seven. If you did not like seven, there's absolutely no way you're going to like this. But I think almost across the board, it's an improvement. This is like the refined version of seven. The combat is so much better. Okay, it really is. And I, again, I, I think there's only more to see with the combat. You're bringing in a familiar face with Kiryu. You're expanding upon a lot of the side stuff that you did. The side missions, I feel, are maybe better than ever. So it's what you got in seven times like 10. And some things have been injected, you know, with some steroids to really make them even better. It is, uh, it's impressive. It really is. So I'm going to finish this video and get back to playing it. There's no way, again, like 10 hours. I'm 10 hours in. Story-wise, I'm like 20%. So if I just did the story, could I finish this in, you know, 25, 30 hours? Yeah, but again, there is some grinding necessary. Um, and the reviewers didn't say that. In fact, they said the opposite. I don't agree. I think you need to be, you know, at least the same level as your opponent, if not maybe a level more. If you fight a lot of opponents that are like two, three levels ahead of you, I don't, you know, 10 hours in, I don't think I stand a chance. So, and I feel like I'm pretty good, you know, uh, figuring out how to fight these guys. So I don't know. I personally feel I need to do it. So why am I saying that? Well, even if you rush through it, I don't think the game lets you rush through it. And then you probably still need 40, 50 hours to just, you know, do it at the, the bare bones level. If you're doing everything, which at this point, I guess I'm kind of leaning that way. I don't intend to max out Sujimon or do the island all that much. I'm not good at that stuff. I'm not into the Animal Crossings of the world. I respect it, but I'm not into it. So for me, I'm honestly looking at a game that's probably 60, 70, 80 hours. And I don't know when I'm going to beat it, but I will eventually. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure, as always, you're subscribed to the channel, bell icon turned on, and I hope to see you all on the next one.